Hey friends, this class is called runner love because runners need some love too. <laughs> now, running is one of those activities that is primarily straight ahead. So this is gonna apply to cyclers as well. All of you out there on your exercise bikes, I'm looking at you. So when we're doing these activities that go straight ahead and move our bodies just in this forward and backward plane of motion, we get those muscles in the front and the backs of our body really conditioned and used to that exercise. But the ones on the sides of our bodies and the, the, the ones that help us to move this way, side to side, they don't get worked as much. And so sometimes that can lead to knee pain, hip pain, lower back pain, and sometimes it doesn't. But it is a good idea to train our bodies three-dimensionally. So in this class today, we'll focus on working some of those side body parts while also giving some relaxing, releasing love to those front and back body parts. So you will need a few props today. You're going to need two therapy balls that are tethered together. So you can, if you don't have the mesh bag, you can put them in a tube sock and tie off the end. And then another thing that you'll need is a blanket. Okay, so let's get started. To begin, you're gonna come over to the right side of your practice space. And we're gonna start waking up these outer hip muscles, okay? so. Standing straight up, just take your left leg straight out to the side and put it back down, okay? When you take your left leg straight out to the side, can you keep the rest of your body upright or does your whole body wanna counterbalance by going out to the right? Okay, just pay attention to that. Those are kind of two separate movements. So for this, can you try to keep your torso um, straight up and down? Okay, so you're gonna take your left leg to the left and place it down. And then you're gonna shift your weight into your left leg and pick your right leg up. Okay, so this is kind of the same position that we were in a moment ago. But then you're gonna bring your right foot in to meet your left. And again, you're gonna keep doing this sidewalk. Left leg out to the side, left foot down, right leg up, and then feet together. So shifting to your right foot, left leg goes out, left foot down, shift into your left foot, the right leg picks up, and then step your feet together. So you're gonna keep going that way until you reach the end of your practice space, and then you'll go back in the other direction. So my outer hips are already awake, <laughs> already feeling this, and so this is a great thing to do um, Sometimes I do this while I am kind of like on hold with an annoying phone call and I'm bored and I need something to do. Um, you can also do this while listening to music or um, you can find some creative ways to incorporate this movement into your daily life. If you have kids and they call for you from across the room, you can inject a little humor and movement into the situation by approaching them like this. <laughs> My kids think I'm crazy. It's okay. <laughs> so you're just going back and forth. And I'm gonna go back so that I ended up at the place where I started. Really feeling it in the outer hips right here. Okay, let's give those guys a break and we're gonna come down to the ground. This is where you might want your blanket. I'm just gonna put it down as a little padding for my knees. So I'm gonna step my right foot forward. Left leg is back here in a, in a low lunge position. And you can do this with your hands on the ground or you can put your hands on blocks or a stack of books. Um, whatever is easier for you. And so you're gonna lunge forward and it's okay if your front knee goes in front of your ankle, just make sure your heel's on the ground. And then you're gonna shift back. It's okay if your foot pops up. Shift forward and shift back. 
Now, um, speaking of straight ahead movements, this is a straight ahead forward and backward movement, but notice if your body tends to, like as you come back, do your hips shift over to the left? As you come forward, do your hips shift over to the right? Can you keep your hips right in the center? Great, and now this next time that you shift back into the straight leg position, go ahead and glue the ball of your foot down to the ground. Say hello to your shin and the muscles around your shin. Take a nice deep breath. Now, um, you wanna keep your leg just as it is, specifically your thigh bone. Don't let your thigh bone rotate. You can kind of make sure that your knee is still pointing in the same direction. You're just gonna move from your ankle and point your toes over to the left. And saying hello now to the side of the shin. Okay, point your toes forward, and let's take one or two more runner's lunges forward and back here. And now let's switch. So step your right knee back, step your left knee forward. Same thing on this side. So go ahead and lunge forward. And again, it's okay if your front knee goes forward over your ankle, just make sure your heel is rooted going back and forth, making sure that your hips are not kind of going on a curvy trail here. We want the hips, the pelvis, to be going straight forward and straight back. And now this time, let's pause when we get to the straight leg position. And then from here, work the sole of the foot down. So I have to come up a little bit to do that, to get my foot down. Saying hello to those muscles on the front of the shin, the front of the ankle, those little forgotten gnarly bits. And now keeping the knee pointing straight up where it is without rotating the thigh bone, just moving from the ankle, you're gonna point your toes over to the right. Any amount, waking up saying hello to the outer shin, the outer ankle. and then go ahead and point your toes forward again. Peel the sole off the ground, and let's take a few more lunging forward and back. Great. And go ahead and step your left knee to meet your right knee, and come on up into a high kneeling position. So I'm gonna turn this way so I can see you. Hi. And now, from here, you're gonna, I'm a little teapot, your right hand down to the ground, and you're gonna take your left knee up, okay? So my knee is still bent here, and my knee isn't forward of my hip. It's pretty, it's pretty in a line. It's a little bit forward, but it's not up here towards my chest, okay? So keeping a little bend in your knee, you're just gonna lift your outer seam of your pant leg, up towards the ceiling and release. So it's a little pulse, 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 pulse. Saying hello to those outer hips. Can you lift your knee and your ankle at the same rate, okay? So we don't want it to look like this. Okay, you see how my ankle is a little bit lower than my knee? Try to keep your ankle and your knee 
in a line. For three, two, and one, go ahead and extend your leg and put your foot down on the ground. Lift your hips as much as you can, kind of arcing through your side body and stretch your left arm in line with your ear. Take a deep breath in, filling up the ribs. Big sigh. And come back upright and let's switch to the other side. So left knee comes in. And then we're gonna, I'm a little teapot down. Left hand finds the ground. The right knee comes up and out to the side. So again, trying to get the right knee close to um, in a line with the hip so it's not too far forward. You also don't want it too far back behind you, okay? And the knee and the ankle are level. So here, we're gonna, again, pulse up and release, pulse and release, waking up these outer hips. Breathe. <laughs> For three, two, and one. Go ahead and extend your leg. Oh, it's shaking. And put the sole of your foot down. Let your hips lift up, arc through your spine. Take your right arm and align with your ear. Deep breath in, expanding the rib cage. And exhale. And let's come back upright. Okay, let's use our therapy balls to give some of our muscles a little love. So I'm gonna move my blanket out of the way. And we're gonna start with our front pocket muscle. So if you imagine where your front pocket is in like a pair of jeans, that's where we're gonna put the therapy balls. So it's not directly on the front of your thigh, it's kind of on the side. And you're gonna put the therapy balls there kind of at a diagonal, okay? So we're gonna come down to the ground and I'll do my left side first. So I'm gonna put my front pocket muscle down there on those therapy balls and I'm kind of rocked over onto the left side. So I'm not flush towards the ground. I'm over to the side just a bit. And so you can kind of roll a little here, move your body forward and back, or I should say up and down and that'll cause the therapy balls to roll a little bit. Remember, this should be a hurt so good feeling. It should not be the kind of sensation that makes you hold your breath or scrunch up your face. That's gonna be counterproductive actually. So these should be kind therapy balls. Not, it's not a more pain, uh, more gain kind of a situation. So now go ahead and hang out on a spot that feels a little bit interesting and get really clear through your left leg. So my left leg is pretty straight here. I've just got my right leg out of the way and I'm gonna try picking up my left leg and putting it down, okay? And as I do this, I'm paying attention to the sensation from the therapy balls and seeing what that feels like. Last one. Okay, so now let's go ahead and switch over to the other side. So you're gonna have the front pocket muscle, the front pocket area of the right leg, right hip, resting on those therapy balls. And you can kind of rock yourself over onto your right side. And again, you can move your body up and down so that the therapy balls kind of roll along your thigh. And again, we want this to be a, 
a pleasant, hurts so good kind of a feeling. Okay, so now go ahead and hang out on one of those interesting spots. Make your right leg pretty straight, pretty clear. And then pick your right leg up and put it back down. And keep going like that. Watching how the stretch or the, the pressure sensation changes from inhale to exhale or from lift to lower, I should say. I'm just very used to saying, watch how the sensation changes from inhale to exhale. <laughs> Last one. Great, and relax. Let's go ahead and push up now. Coming upright to a seated position. So from here, we're gonna say hello to the IT band, okay? And that front pocket muscle that we just worked actually becomes the IT band, which runs from the outer hip to the outer knee. And this is one of those places that doesn't necessarily respond to rolling a whole lot, um, but we are gonna use the therapy balls to help us get at it. So I like to do this so that um, the therapy balls are kind of nestling the IT band between them. So I put the, the therapy balls perpendicular to my IT band, not right in a line, but perpendicular. And so I'm gonna start with my left leg and I have my left leg out in front of me and I just get my right leg out of the way wherever it's comfortable. And I'm starting kind of midway between my hip and my knee. And so depending on your body, um, the size of your body, the, tens um, the, the tension that's in your body and the texture of your tissues and the size of the therapy balls you're using, all of that stuff, um, that's gonna change your experience of the pressure. So um, keep that in mind. And these are all just different um, suggestions on ways to move here. So um, here, I like to put my hands on my leg and kind of give a little weight to my leg so that it rests more firmly on the therapy balls. You can also bend down um, and take a forearm if that feels appropriate. And that's kind of nice too because you can give your inner thigh a little bit of pressure from your forearm. Um, so the forearm is gonna be more pressure than the hands, obviously. Um, and you can kind of do a rocking motion where you go forward and backward. So pressure, no pressure pressure, no pressure. You can also just get to a place that feels interesting and that might take hmm, moving the therapy balls up towards the knee a little bit more or down towards the hip a little bit more. Find a spot that feels interesting, okay? And then maybe pump it a few times and then easily, gently plant and hold. Take some deep breaths. Let go of any tension that you don't need right now. So that would be from the face, the jaw, the tongue, the shoulders, the tummy, your bottom. Take one more breath here. Okay, and let's go ahead and switch to the other leg. So from here, again, the IT band runs from the outer hip to the outer knee. The therapy balls are gonna be perpendicular to the IT band. And I'm just getting my left leg out of the way. So you can start by, maybe you don't need any extra pressure. Maybe just letting your leg rest there is enough pressure. Maybe you rest your hands on your knee and give a little extra pressure. Maybe you want more pressure and you lean forward and put your forearm there. It's your choice. You can do this plant and hold, or you can kind of rock forward and back. And you can 
adjust where the therapy balls are. You can move them closer up towards the knee or closer towards the hip and just explore a little bit there. And then find a spot that feels interesting. Okay, and then that's where you're gonna, we're gonna plant and hold for a longer moment. So maybe you're using your hands, maybe you're using your elbow to provide a little extra um, weight. Again, hurts so good. It should feel so beneficial. Um, if it's making your face scrunch up or you hold your breath or you clench your jaw, that's not gonna be helpful. Um, so ease up on the pressure if that's the case. So here, let's just take a deep breath in, let it out through the mouth and relax any other unnecessary tension from your face. Let it drain out of your shoulders, out of your tummy, out of this left leg that's not in use right now. three, two, and one. Okay, go ahead and release. So from here, we're going to work on the knee from the underside of the knee. So um, with your two therapy balls, you're going to place these balls in your knee pit and create a knee pit vice, if you will. So you're gonna squeeze your heel, left heel, towards your sit bone, okay? And then you can even play around with lifting and lowering your heel. And you can feel how that changes the sensation. So often we think um, when we're having knee troubles, we think about the front of the knee and all of the muscles and tendons and things that connect to the front of the knee. Um, but we can also do some really great things for the knee by uh, addressing it from the back of the leg as well. So give a really good squeeze here, heel towards sit bone and heel lifts and then relax. And let's go over to the other leg. So again, get your tethered balls here in the knee pit vise, tethered therapy balls in the knee pit vise and scoot your heel close to your sit bone, as close as feels comfortable. And you can give that a squeeze, like you're trying to draw your heel closer to your sit bone. And you can also lift and lower your heel and watch how that changes the sensation. taking some nice deep breaths. This is one of my go-to moves when my knees start to feel cranky. Um, it feels like it creates space for my knee joint, like it's tractioning my knee joint a little bit. And it feels really good on the, the bottom parts of my hamstrings that are closest to my knee and my calf. Okay. Give one more final squeeze, like you're trying to squeeze your heel towards your sit bone as close as you can, trying to lift the heel too, and relax. Okay, now let's take the therapy balls for the top of the shin here. So here you can feel where the shin bone is, okay? It's gonna rest in the valley between the two therapy balls. So the therapy balls, are gonna be rolling from the knee down to the front of the ankle and massaging these spots along the, the sides of the shin bone. So we're gonna to come to all fours to do that. And I'm gonna start with my right knee and, or my right leg. I have the therapy balls up closer to my knee and I'm gonna bring my knee towards my hands and away from my hands. And that's going to allow the therapy balls to roll up and down. Now, if your left knee doesn't like being on the, on the ground without padding, go ahead and pause 
get your blanket and slide it under your under your left knee. And find a spot on the, the front of the shin here that feels a little interesting, like we've been saying. And so your toes are pointed. Put the top of your foot on the ground and push the top of your foot into the ground like you're trying to bring your toes towards your shin. Okay, and then release and press and release. And then you can kind of wag your foot from side to side and see how that feels. Maybe do a little bit more rolling. And then we're gonna switch over to the other side. So left shin rests in the valley, um, the valley of the balls, the valley of the therapy balls. And you're gonna roll from your knee down to your ankle. And my, I, I keep stopping because the pressure of my weight keeps um, kind of making the therapy ball separate. So I pause and regroup them a little bit more and then continue. So you might have to do that too, especially, you know, especially if you have a sock, those tube socks get, um, they can stretch out. Okay, so find a spot on the shin that feels interesting. And then you're gonna push the top of your left foot into the ground and release. And push and release. And watch how the sensation changes as you do that action. And you can also wag your foot from side to side. And maybe roll a little bit more. And release. Okay. So one final thing, we've done a lot for the outsides of the legs. We've worked the fronts and the back sides of the legs. Now let's say hello to our inner thighs and this will be our hello and goodbye. Um, so you're gonna come down to your stomach and have your blanket close by, especially if um, your knees and ankles don't like to rest flat on the ground without extra padding. That could be really helpful. So I'm gonna just kind of preemptively put my blanket here on the right side of my practice space. And I'm gonna come down to my stomach. And I'm going to just get comfortable with the upper arms and the upper body. You can rest your head on the ground if you want to. I'm not gonna do that because it makes the microphone sound funny. <laughs> so um, here we're gonna take the right leg and frog it out to the side okay so you have your knee in a line with your hip and your knee in a line with your ankle with a 90 degree bend in the knee and trying to let that right hip kind of fall down towards the mat a bit more taking some nice deep breaths here you can also play around with straightening the leg and seeing how that feels. Relaxing through your shoulders and your neck and your facial muscles. One more breath here.
Okay, let's get ready to go over to the other side. So go ahead and extend your right leg back. And if you're using a blanket, go ahead and shift your blanket to the other side. And we're gonna frog the left leg out this time. So letting the left side of the pelvis, that bony hip point on the front of your pelvis, the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine, um, say that 10 times fast, you're letting that fall down towards the ground or inviting it to fall down towards the ground. Softening through your ankles, the fronts of your thighs, your shoulders, neck and jaw. Take one more deep breath in, let it out with a big sigh. And then go ahead and extend your right or your left leg back behind you. Take a moment there, maybe wiggle a little. And then when you're ready, go ahead and come upright. You can come to a seated position if you like. I hope that your legs and your hips feel like $100 or more. <laughs> um, you can come back to this video anytime you feel like your legs need a little bit of a tune up after a lot of running or cycling. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me to move.